The year 2020 sounds far too futuristic for my liking. I still remember the year 1999, 10 years old, doing my bestest to stay up to see the new year. The turn of the millennium, and uh, yeah, I made it to 9 p.m. and fell asleep. There's me when midnight rolls around. I only get to see the turn of millennium once. Well, until the year 3000, but I don't think I'm gonna make it to then. Anyway, on a more positive note, the future is here. We're going into 2020, and it doesn't have to be quite as terrifying as it seems, because it's a whole nother year of video game releases, specifically so, on the Nintendo Switch. Believe it or not. I've made videos like this before where I take just a ridiculous amount of cool and fun looking video games and I throw them in your face and make your wallet scared. From little indie hidden gems you've probably never heard of before all the way to a brand new freaking Zelda game. There's probably something for everyone in this video today. Surprise cat. So <laughs> I have about 40 games in this video today. If this video helps you out or you find a couple games you're looking forward to next year because of it, make sure you smash that like button. These aren't easy to put together. Subscribe if you want to learn more about the Switch, maybe, or just hear me blab about things, or this cat might be back in videos. I don't know. All right, wait, before we start this video, though, I actually learned something mind-blowing yesterday. Like, I, I, I could... Yes, this video is sponsored by ExpressVPN, but they were the ones that told me this. I knew that your laptop, your PC, your phone, all of that can obviously be hacked into, but did you know that even your Switch can be hacked into? If you're ever connected to an unencrypted website, or if any of the games you're playing are not properly encrypted, people can still get into it, get your login details, financial details, etc. Alright, that's freaking scary. So how about we just go ahead and all be protected as possible, just in case? Alright, I didn't mean to scare you. I know you're already finding your way down in that description to click on my special link and get www.expressvpn forward slash beat em ups to get your three months free trial because it helps me as much as it helps you. But before that, let me tell you a thing about ExpressVPN that's less scary. Like being able to watch what you want, when you want, where you want, you get the point. When I was in Japan, me and uh, Kim, we signed into ExpressVPN and watched a bunch of shows from back home we couldn't get there. And if you're in like Australia, do you know that Netflix in the US has Grey's Anatomy and The Walking Dead? You can't watch any of that on Netflix in Australia unless you bring up your little Express VPN, you hit the on button in the United States or wherever and now all of a sudden you refresh your page and bada bing bada boom, you got yourself some shows baby! Express VPN, again the number one trusted VPN is definitely the way to go. Thanks so much Express VPN for sponsoring this video and scaring me into never playing my Switch on a public Wi-Fi ever again. Alright, in no particular order, first up we have Gods and Monsters. I guess that after creating a Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the team behind the game weren't ready to leave ancient Greece behind them, and they set out to create a brand new storybook adventure about a forgotten hero on a quest to save the Greek gods. In Gods and Monsters, you'll find tricky puzzles, mysterious dungeons, and many mythical beasts. This game looks gorgeous, and I'm ready for it. It's just around the corner at this point. Not sure why I winked there. This next one is interesting and could go either way. Deliver Us the Moon is a sci-fi thriller set in an apocalyptic near future where the Earth's natural resources have been depleted. The gameplay has both first and third person parts, survival elements like oxygen tanks depleting in the cold of space, intricate puzzles and three hours of original music. Color me intrigued. Proving that a Xenoblade game can have likable characters, Monolith Soft's epic Xenoblade Chronicles game, which originally launched in 2012 on the Wii, is destined to be reborn on Nintendo Switch as Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. We can all finally relive the adventures of Shulk in the best Xenoblade game the Switch will see. Doom Eternal? Hey, what do, you, what do you want me to say? It's the new Doom, you know, the last one that was really good? Yeah, the sequel. Other than that, buy Doom Eternal, you know it's gonna be good. I actually haven't played Outer Worlds yet as much as I want to. Because surprising everyone, the publisher announced a port to Switch before the end of 2020's physical year, which means like, soon. Before the end of March anyway, so I decided to wait rather than have to play it twice. The game is made by Obsidian Entertainment, the company behind Fallout New Vegas. And that's the Fallout game that many Fallout fans consider the last great Fallout game. Well, at least until now. Because Outer Worlds is like Fallout and it's uh, supposed to be better than all the recent Fallouts. Especially Fallout Ooh. 76. 
Now I can't lie, I've never seen or read anything to do with fairy tale. The only thing I know about it is I think that's where that sound effect comes from, right? The one every YouTuber uses, including myself, the... Okay, so we haven't heard of fairy tale, but I have played a lot of Koei Tecmo's games. Ninja Gaiden, Dynasty Warriors, Noah, Noo, Nia, Neo. I can't, I don't know. So when you tell me that Koei is taking the best-selling manga fairy tale and turning it into a possibly awesome JRPG for the Switch in 2020, <laughs> are you ready, kids? Aye, aye. I do so many things I regret. For years, nerds on YouTube stood in front of their game walls and blabbed on about a little hidden gem called Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom. Well, I guess this gem ain't so hidden no more, as it's getting a full rehydrated remake with a brand new multiplayer mode included. To clarify, I was one of those nerds on YouTube, so I'm glad to see this game finally get the love it deserves. While the Pokemon company struggled to innovate their mainline games, Digimon be out here like, hold my Digivice. I do so many things I regret. The newest installment into the series, Digimon Survive, is a survival strategy role-playing game where players' choices influence the direction of the story, including the Digimon's Digivolution process. I have no idea how to say that. The game will have multiple endings, and should wrong choices be made, characters will be killed. Yep. This ain't your regular kitty monster game. Digimon has clearly grown with its audience, and I'm down for it. Also, that stab at Pokemon was purely for comedic defect. Hey, you know how I mentioned a lot of these games I hadn't even heard of before? Well, Chris Tales was one of them. Where the heck did Chris Tales come from? And how did I miss its initial release back in June? This game is gorgeous. My eyes don't even know where to begin. The colors, the art, the beautifully hand-drawn 2D animations. This indie gem is a love letter to JRPGs and the world literally bursts to life. Your choices will change both the present and the future across more than 20 hours of gameplay. This is on my must-buy list, for sure. It looks amazing. Can anyone else smell my hype for Trials of Mana? Mm -hmm. Trials of Mana 3 has had a huge overhaul and is being slapped on the Switch this April. Gorgeous revamped 3D graphics. You can pick your party from six different characters, change up your classes, and save the freaking world. I actually can't wait for this one. Um, apparently back in April, a faithful remake of XIII, or 13 as some people like to call it, was announced to be coming to Switch. And it was gonna release in November? Well, that didn't happen, and I didn't know anything about any of that. But apparently it's now coming out in 2020. Honestly, this is really cool. I hope it turns out to be a fun game. The original was one of my all-time favorite GameCube games. It had a really cool comic book style and great action gameplay for the time. We don't really know much about this remake or what it's gonna look like, but I'm still excited nonetheless. Early next year, in January, the worlds of Fire Emblem and Atlas games have smish-smashed once again, but this time, they're gonna dance away their feelings. Of all the Wii U games left to port to the Switch, this wasn't my number one, but it deserves a good home as much as any of those other poor consoles titles. It's a strange game that blends the combat of Fire Emblem and Shin Megami Tensei series and throws in some stunning musical performances. Now, you guys know that I'm a big My Hero fan, both the anime and the fighter. I was big time surprised when I picked up My Hero 1's Justice and discovered it was actually a really fun and solid fighting game. With a sizable roster of 20 characters, a story that cleverly followed along with the anime, and it was crammed full of action. Well, I was even more surprised to hear they were making a sequel. Was there really a need to make another sequel so soon? I mean, unless they're adding, you know, a couple extra new characters. Oh, what's that? It has 40 characters? Double the roster size? <laughs> Pre-ordered. We've already seen a couple of Darksiders games release on the Switch, and honestly, they felt right at home with the rest of the library. And now, Darksiders Genesis drops in February, although unlike the other games, this is a new game in the series. And also unlike the other games, Genesis is a top-down hack-and-slash action RPG comparable to, of course, Diablo. The only game you ever compare any of game of this style too. And I mean, if you're not sure about picking it up on Switch, you can try it already because it's released on Steam for $30. Or if you want a better deal, it also released on Google Stadia for $40. Wow! 
Speaking of GameCube games getting a remastered release on the Nintendo Switch, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is also coming out pretty soon in January. One of the weirder Final Fantasy spin-off games, but a personal favorite of mine. This new version will come with updated graphics and sounds, new character voiceovers, and a new online multiplayer mode. The first time I ever heard of or saw Snack World was when I was in Japan. This new release has gold in the title, which means it includes both expansion packs and all other downloadable content from the Japanese release. It should be a fun little title. Uh, Animal Crossing, <laughs> do I have to? Can we just move? Can you save me some time and allow me to move on swiftly here? What? Look, okay, it's Animal Crossing. We've all waited too dang long for this game to come out. It finally is coming out, and I'm ready to dive into my first real Animal Crossing game experience. I don't really know what I'm in for, but I can tell you that Tom Nook ain't gonna know what hit him. Whatever that is supposed to mean. Hey look, another Diablo-like kind of game, Minecraft Dungeons. Can I be honest with you guys though? Like, we're all friends, right? I can be honest about my feelings. I actually think this game looks pretty damn good. This just looks like a fun, unique take on the dungeon crawler genre. For up to four players, kind of weirdly there's no class system so the players can use any kind of weapon or armor they want. It's supposed to be more fun and way less serious than other games in this genre. Beat em up! That's my channel name, and it's also the name of a genre of game, and a game that falls into that genre is Streets of Rage. The fourth one is releasing on Switch next year. It takes place 10 years after the events of Streets of Rage 3, and it, it looks good. It might actually be the best one yet, but only time will tell. Only time will tell. <laughs> Rumors of Persona 5 finding its way to Switch ran rampant early this year and I'm happy to confirm that it's not happening. Uh, <laughs> we went through a lot of ups and downs like Joker being released in Smash Brothers. It all ended up being Persona Scramble. I mean... So Persona Scramble is a Dynasty Warriors style game. Think Hyrule Warriors or Fire Emblem Warriors just with a Persona skin. It's not Persona 5, but I'll buy it. <laughs> Rogue Company is a multiplayer shooter coming to all major platforms, including Switch of course. It features cross-play and is developed by Hi-Rez Studios. It kind of looks like a mix between Fortnite and Call of Duty, maybe? All I know is it'll probably be free. <laughs> no more Heroes 3, dang it if I ain't excited for this one. <laughs> developed by one of my all-time favorites, Grasshopper Manufacture, No More Heroes is back after a 10-year hiatus. Unless you count Travis Strikes again, which I don't. The new game will follow Travis's return to Santa Destroy, as he must defend the world from a new alien threat via hack and slash style gameplay. And I can't wait. Devil's Hunt is a third-person action game in which players fight their way through Hell, Jerusalem, and Miami? So this game allows you to change between human and demon forms, it has a large variety of attacks and combos, and wait, hold on a second, is this not a Devil May Cry game? Either way, I'm gonna get this one and try it out. Devil May Hunt releases early 2020. Ari and the Secret of the Seasons? This game is one I have my eye on and I'm pretty excited to dive into. An adorably charming art style, it's an action-adventure game where you play as a, a young girl who gains the ability to manipulate the seasons around her. You use that ability to to defeat enemies, overcome obstacles, and solve complex puzzles on her adventure across the world. I think this one looks super promising. Rock of Ages 3 is a game where you make your own levels and destroy everybody else's. A competitive tower defense game mixed with Monty Python-esque humor that gives you, well, this. It just looks like some absurdly ridiculous fun. A Hollow Knight Silk Song? Do I have? can we just- can it be another one of those Doom or Animal Crossing scenarios where we just <laughs> right on past it? Clearly it's gonna be amazing, clearly I'm excited for it, and it's coming to Switch. Wanna know something funny? RPG Maker MV is coming to Switch on the 30th of March next year. It's a game where you can, surprise, make your own RPGs, just like to the Moon, which was made on an earlier version of RPG Maker and is re-releasing on Switch in January. I honestly know nothing about Deadly Premonition or its sequel, which is apparently a Nintendo Switch exclusive, which is kind of weird because it's a horror game, a Nintendo Switch exclusive horror game? I 
I know that they are open world survival horror games, I know they have a huge cult following despite not selling very well, and I know the first game was the most critically polarizing horror game of all time, and regarded as an example of games as an art form. Well that's confusing, uh, the sequel should be interesting. It's not every day that a Sega Saturn game gets a remake and a re-release. Oh, today is one of them days. Well, not today, but I'm... But thankfully, it's happening. Panzer Dragoon is heading to Switch with improved graphics and controls. Personally, I don't care about any of that. I'm just looking forward to blasting that soundtrack again. Before I move on to the last group of games for this video, which I'm putting in their own little section and calling that section just the games that are what the heck are happening to you guys. Come on, hurry up and release. Why aren't you out yet? And most of them are the big AAA budget titles that we expect to see next year, but we also expected to see last year and then some of them even the year before that. You know how in like Nintendo Directs or really any presentation of video games where you get around to that that last couple minutes before they do get to the big announcements and they just do a big montage of all these games that they just didn't have anything to say or couldn't be bothered talking about. Alright, here's the big ones. Here's the games that we all want to see next year and they really should release next year and they might release next year but they probably won't release next year. Metroid Prime 4. Look, we all know that this is probably the least likely on the list. Even with it being scrapped and restarted like a year ago now, it's not impossible that it could be ready for a release late next year. And now there is an intense amount of pressure to get this game right. Okay, but what the heck, Bayonetta 3 has to be next year. End of last year, I thought it had to be this year. And now it has to be next year. We've been waiting for Bayonetta as long as we've been waiting for Metroid. But at least we know kind of what's been going on with Metroid. Bayonetta has just been dead silent. Bayonetta next year. Come on, chop chop. Oh, you want to speak of a game shrouded in mystery? How about Shin Megami Tensei V? Alright, the release trailer for this game is literally older than the Nintendo Switch itself. Apparently back then was when they had just started development, and even by the end of 2017, Atlas said it was nowhere near coming soon. But a year ago, in November 2018, apparently it entered full-scale development. So, my guess is late next year? I mean, that gives the game a year and a half of full-scale and over three years of total development time. Pikmin 4 is a strange case. Miyamoto himself confirmed Pikmin 4 was coming in 2015. Since then, in an interview, he said he's been asked to not share anything about it, but that the game was progressing. And that was 2017. He also said it was close to completion and the Pikmin teams are always working on the next game. So going by all of that, all we can say is that Pikmin 4 is coming to Nintendo Switch and has been in development possibly since 2015. I don't know what to believe, but if Pikmin 4 isn't released next year, I'm calling Miyamoto out on Twitter. Alright, okay, I'm calling this one. I do believe Breath of the Wild 2 is going to release next year in 2020. We haven't been told that, but hear me out. Ever since the first game released on Switch's launch, I was a firm believer that the next game in the franchise would be a sequel of some kind. You don't spend half a freaking decade developing a brand new Zelda engine like this and release it to heavy praise and then just scrap it and start again on a brand new engine for the next one. Like Majora's Mask after Ocarina of Time, it was obvious to me they would inevitably work within the Breath of the Wild universe to create a possibly much darker sequel, but at the very least, a sequel. Looks like I was right about the darker sequel too, judging by that trailer, which gives me the heebie-jeebies and I love it. Assuming they got to work on this sequel shortly after after the release of the first one in 2017, there's no reason to not believe that almost three years later, we could see a 2020 release. So no matter what kind of person you are, no matter where you like to play games, it's pretty much a guarantee there is something on here you'll love. So once you add these 40-ish games and slam it in the library, and then everything else that's gonna come out next year, the Nintendo Switch will have, and already has, one of the most diverse video game libraries a system has ever had. 
which is why I love this little thing and there's always something to talk about. With that said, I hope this video helped you in some way. Was there a game in particular that you're looking forward to? Leave it down below. What did I miss? If you're still here and you haven't hit that like button yet, you really have to subscribe, especially if you haven't already and you are still here. Like that, you've made it the whole way through. You might even click on one of these end cards. You might even click that link down below before you leave and check out today's video sponsor who helped make this video possible. That would be awesome. Okay, well, I'm done now. Bye.